blood clotting is going to come up in a bunch of different places throughout your um, education as a surgical tech. So we're going to discuss this in the chapter on diagnostic testing, in the chapter on pharmacology, and especially in the chapter on the surgical wound, which is where the book actually covers blood clotting. And the other chapters are going to deal with understanding um, how to prevent or create blood clots um, for our surgical patients. And so it's also going to come up in your anatomy class, and uh, we're going to discuss embolus and thrombolus in one of the chapters. I didn't look to see which um, chapter title that one had. So this is going to be a fairly recurring theme. So let's, to start understanding blood clotting, let's start by looking at a blood vessel. So if you were to cut a blood vessel open and look into the end of the blood vessel, you would see that it has three layers. The inner layer is made of endothelium or endothelial cells. The next layer is the smooth muscle layer. And the third layer is the connective tissue layer. And it's going to be important that you know that there's collagen in that connective tissue layer. When we get into 204, you're going to need to know the three layers of the blood vessel that I've shown here in a more technical set of terms. So the endothelium is going to become the tunica intima. The middle layer, the smooth muscle layer, is going to be the tunica media. And the outer layer, the connective tissue layer, is going to, layer is going to be the tunica adventia. Then if we look inside the blood vessel floating around in the blood itself, there are going to be red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. One of the ways to activate the, clotting, the blood clotting process in the body is to get a cut in a blood vessel. So step one. Step one is vessel is damaged. And then um, the second thing that your blood vessels are going to do is something called a vasospasm. That is going to be when the blood vessels constrict to try and decrease the blood flow. So this smooth muscle layer that we talked about before is going to constrict and narrow the blood vessel, thus allowing less blood to come out because the diameter of the blood vessel is going to get smaller. So the first or second step that happens is a vasospasm. That is going to hopefully decrease the blood flowing out of the blood vessel because the blood vessel is going to be narrower. Then we get the formation of a platelet plug. And what happens there is that the platelets are flowing out of your blood vessel along with the blood. So the blood is, you know, sort of flowing out of your blood vessel here. And then the platelets are going to flow out with it and they're going to reach the outer edge of the blood vessel here and come in contact with the connective tissue, which we said was made of collagen. And so these platelets are going to come into contact with the collagen. So platelet plus collagen is going to lead to activated platelets. So activated platelets change their shape and start sending out chemicals that attract more platelets. And so you're going to start having more platelets join in up here 
around the site of injury because of these chemicals that these platelets are sending out. And the more of these that come up, the more of this chemical is being sent out. So you get a whole bunch of platelets coming up to join these other platelets at the site of injury. And then you get clotting factors. And luckily, we don't have to learn about all of the clotting factors in search tech class, um, nor in the anatomy class of this um, group. So you, there's just dozens or so clotting factors that show up here and um, make a cascade um, to clot the blood vessel. These are impacted by vitamin K and by calcium, which we will discuss in a bit why that's an important detail there. And then these clotting factors are going to convert prothrombin into active thrombin. And then thrombin is going to further the cascade here and convert fibrinogen into active fibrin. And one thing to know about fibrinogen is that it is soluble in water such as the solution that your blood is in and fibrin is insoluble. Some sort of magic trick here happens when the thrombin activates the fibrinogen to turn into the fibrin and it becomes insoluble. So back up here in our blood clot we start getting these fibers appearing of fibrin. Okay. These make a big old mesh, and that is what starts to make the blood clot. And so that is going to be step four in our clotting cascade here. And I'm going to write it off to the side over here. But we've got four is going to be the coagulation. And that is going to be a fibrin joins with the platelets. Okay, so that is the basis of how all of this clotting process happens. So that is the clotting process. Now we're going to talk in the next couple of videos about uh, ways that your body prevents this from happening. Uh, when it shouldn't and ways that we can encourage this to happen in surgery so that our patients don't bleed out on the operating table. Um, so we're going to talk about anticoagulants and hemostatic agents and how those work. And we're going to discuss um, the diagnostic testing that we use to test this clotting process. So. Um, this is in an earlier chapter and then we will get to some of those other things so if you go to watch those videos later remember that you can come back and watch how this process happens so that you can get a refresher.